Bridges here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be in Vegas Pro 20 and we're going to be editing together a video. So if you're brand new and you just want to see the workflow, this is your chance to see it. It is, in my opinion, the fastest video editor out there. Uh, the workflow for it is just incredible. So let's just get started, shall we? We'll be doing a bit of green screening. I'll show you a really neat trick you can do to get your timestamps really fast. And uh, you'll see just a lot of the flow of how this goes down. So first off, let's just start from the very beginning. When you boot up, it'll put you in a new project, but I'll also just go to a new one. These settings might not be the ones you want, but it doesn't matter, just hit okay. Because when you bring in your footage, it's going to import those settings for you. So I'm gonna grab my screen capture. This is my computer screen. And you see it says, do you want to update the settings to match? And I'm gonna say, yeah, do that. So now if we actually take a peek here at the properties, we can see it's now at 60 frames a second, things have been updated to match, so that's nice. The preview window may look different depending on your settings here, but I have it on best and auto. So this saves some resources. If you wanna see the full resolution, you can turn that on, but this is more taxing on the CPU. So I tend to leave it on auto when I don't need a super clean preview. Usually if you need to like read text or something on here, you wind up using full. So with that done, let's take a look here. We've got my screen, you know, this is just the screen capture. And we've got here some audio. Now this top audio track, I don't need. It is grouped by default since they're all together. Uh, this is the voice, this is the voice and the computer audio combined. And I record this just so if I ever play it back in a regular media player, it plays without having to worry about the other tracks. It looks at track one, most of them do. So I'm gonna ungroup it by hitting U for ungroup, ungrouped, and I can just delete it. And I also wanna delete this track, so I'm gonna right click on it and go to delete track. So the track's gone, we've got our two tracks here. Now this one is my voice, and this one is the computer audio. And I want to normalize them. Normalizing is a way of taking an audio that you recorded softer and just stretching it to use the full range. That's how you can think of it. So this way you don't have any audio problems if you record softer. And we're gonna go to properties. So right click on it, go to properties and hit normalize and it will normalize it. So you see how it just got bigger. That's all it does. It just uses the full range. So with this done, um, this is pretty much set. Let's go ahead. I used my mouse wheel, by the way, to scroll out. You could just click wherever you want to zoom in and zoom out. It's real nice. So now I want to bring in the footage of me. Now this is just recording in my house with a green screen behind me. So I'm just going to grab this, bring it on in. And there is an excellent green screen ability provided now with Vegas. It's been provided for a little while. It's called Primata Studio. I believe I'm saying this right. It could be like dead wrong, but it'll be in your third party. You should have gotten an email with Vegas uh, Pro. This comes with Vegas Pro, by the way. Um, and yeah, it'll have an activation and you'll be able to install it and it'll just work right out the gate. So be sure to do that if you haven't done it and then it'll show up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and first, I wanna clean this footage up just a touch. So if I click over here, you can see there's like a bunch of crap all around. I wanna get that out of the frame. So I'm gonna click on this little here square. It's the pan crop. And in here, it'll pop up. It might be a, a window for you. Um, you can dock them and undock them if I can recall how to do it. I think you have to click the tab. Yeah, I click the tab. And if you hold control, you can dock it in a, in a spot in the program if you want. So I'm gonna move this playhead over and I would like to make it so that this frame only includes me and the green screen and gets rid of everything else. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and grab a side and it will let me just crop it on over. I'll just grab each one while holding Control and Alt. And there you go, easy as pie. There are other ways to do this. This is the way I like to do it. So we're good to go. Now we wanna load up Permata Studio on it so we can do some green screening. This is far superior to the chroma key here, by the way. So I heavily recommend this. So we're gonna grab it and just drag it on. It'll load it up in the chain. So first we hit pan crop, then it, we hit the green screening tool. And let's go ahead and do this. So first up, 
I'm not gonna, this isn't gonna be like an entire rundown of what every setting does, but I do have a problem here that's pretty common. I've got hot spots. You see how this spot is brighter and this spot is brighter, down here is darker and darker. This is an issue with how the lighting on the screen is. And there is a tool in here to deal with that. So we'll see how this affects the green screen right now. So I am going to go over to auto analyze and it's just gonna automatically try and get the green screen. So we hit that, it's gonna do it, but we see we still have some spots that didn't quite get removed. And that's uh, also bump the resolution up to full for this part. Now here, we're looking at the final composition and we can also view our current mat, but there's some additional mat viewing settings in here that kind of emphasize issues with the mat. So this is not good. We want this to be white and this to be black, but instead very little is black. This is the part that's gonna be removed. I'm very white, but this gray stuff is being removed, but not very well. So we would ideally like to fix this up and make it totally black. So to do that, by the way, you could just click this button here to see the mat. Um, but this, I, I like sometimes viewing it this way because it shows you a little bit more what's going on when you look at the mat status. So in order to do this first, there is a control in here called adjust light. And what this does is it tries to fix these uneven lighting situations. So I'm going to turn that on. You can already see it immediately makes quite a difference. And then I'm going to drag it over. And I'm kind of aggressive with it. With my footage, I found some good success with it. Um, but you may need to nuance this a little bit more. But you can see it's basically gone. And we are going to have a much cleaner mat. If we look at our mat status, far cleaner. Now it is a far cry from totally clean. There's a few things we can do to clean this up a little further. We can also try moving this slider around a little bit. So after we have this set up, we want to look now at our sampling mode. We're able to add additional shades of green that will be removed. And this is very, very handy because it's, it's, really, that's, it's really hard to do off just one shade of green when I have so much different green behind me because I'm not lighted super evenly. So make sure your sampling mode's on clean, the background noise, and then you have this little crosshairs, or you can actually come down to the sample point and you can move it in here as well. That's a little less intuitive. So I'm gonna move it up here to this bit and let's clean that up real quick. I'm going to take that sample and it will be added to be cleaned out, to be removed from the background. So that goes away. Let's see if we can't grab this spot over here. Take that sample, that works pretty well. And we'll come down here and grab this one as well. Now that one went a bit too far. So I should also emphasize here that we are looking at an emphasized version of the mat and Primata Studio will actually deal a lot of, a lot with a lot of this for us. So we don't need this part to be totally perfect, but if we look at our actual mat, the mat looks incredible. There's actually, the, the spot up there looked a little troublesome, like we might get some noise uh, based on the mat status. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a sample of that. Um, so let me grab, where'd that crosshairs go? If you can't find it, because it's like, it might be in this gray area, like there it is. Um, you can always click down and grab it here and it'll pop up a little bit easier to find. So yeah, I'm gonna put it up there and I'm gonna take that sample, try to just clean that up. And let's see if we can't grab over here and I'm going to reduce the resolution to five by five and we'll take that sample as well. Oh wow, that cleaned up real nice over there. Now our matte status looks really good when we check that. So I'm gonna go ahead and run with that. There is one more control I like to touch in here that can really help with the edges. For my particular case, there's like a ton of stuff in here that can really clean up pretty much any situation. But if we go over to spill, right now it's on complement. What this does is it gets rid of the green that would be on you from the reflected light from the green screen. So I'm gonna go down to complement. I'm going to change it to solid color and check that out. It just pops up, the edges become so clear. And you're able to reduce the amount that you want here. And I'm also gonna turn on the secondary spill remover. So you saw there was a little bit of green that shows up there. Like if I turn it off, it's just right there ever so slightly. I'm gonna pop this on and it's just gonna clean it right up. Now we have a super clean green screen. And what I like to do as well while I'm here is go to the mat and really quick, just sort of scroll through various points of footage. Oh, and this, I'll explain what's happening here. I know exactly what's causing that. 
But uh, if we go through here and look, we're just looking to see if there's any sort of gray spots that show up. And this looks pretty good, no issues. Now at the beginning here, I accidentally keyframed it instead of making the cropping issue completely fixed. So if you go to pan crop, you see how the keyframe is where I have it here? We just need to delete this first one. And now this is the only keyframe. I'll just move it to the front. So it'll start there. So you can see at the beginning that's that's fixed now. So there we go. We've got a great green screen. Let's go ahead, let's turn off the map view. And uh, we are pretty much done with this. And let's put this on its own video track. And actually, let's insert one audio track. I know I deleted it earlier, but it will be handy. So I'm gonna hit control Q to make an audio track. Put that up there. And I wanna make a video track. Um, which I always come over here, but I believe it's control shift Q. Yeah, it is control shift Q Drag it up. So now we've got our video and our audio lined up real nice And what I like to do is come in here and line these things up and look at the waveforms And it might help if I normalize this a little bit so I can see them a little more clearly So I'm gonna go to property Normalize so this is the scratch audio from the camera and I just want to have these things line up so that my footage lines up with the talking on the screen capture. And let's just hear it real quick. Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing. Beautiful. And we're gonna go ahead and hit U to unattach it and delete that. And we're done with this track. It was just for that one purpose. So I'm gonna delete this as well. And I'm gonna hit Control A to select everything and hit G to group it. So now, it is all grouped together. So, okay, I've got my footage, done the green screen, got the audio, treated the audio. You can do more audio processing, adding effects like that, but this audio is fine. Today we're looking at Samplitude. I As you can see, it, it sounds fine, it's great. Um, what we're gonna do now is, we, let's just say, I'm gonna do a quick hypercut, just, you know, come in, say, hey, does it start right here? Cause sometimes I restart a few times before I get an intro that I like. See, I'm right there pondering life and whatever I just said. Eric Burgess here. There we go. So right there, I want to make a cut. So I'm just going to hit S for split. It's going to split it. I'm going to delete this half. And I'm going to bring this on over. So there we go. Now at the beginning, I might want to make a marker for YouTube. YouTube requires a marker at the beginning in order to read the timestamps. So I'm going to hit M and type like intro. And let's just say over here, I've got like cool audio thing. I might put that cool audio bit. You know, maybe that's gonna be a timestamp. And maybe I'll have another, let's say I wanna get rid of this right here. I can make a cut. I could delete it, bring this over. And I could put down another thing like outro, you know, just as a quick example. So you would go through, you would listen, you'd zoom in, you'd zoom out. Um, you can hold shift and scroll to move sideways. And then wherever you click, a really nice workflow that exists here is if you put play, there's a separate edit head. So you can make edits while playback's happening. This is pretty rare in a video editor. In fact, Vegas is the only one I, I know of that really lets you do it this way. Now we have this a VST, going. so pretty I simple, can make a cut right? here. We got our VST. So I, even though it was playing back, I was able to come over here, make a cut, do edits. Um, that's part of the reason why Vegas, besides just how straightforward the shortcuts are, is just incredible. It's like amazing. Also, the ability to group video with audio however you please. They don't have to be separated. In most video editors, you have to separate them. It's just incredible. You're able to just say, oh, this goes with this, and it's right next to each other. So it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so let's just say that this is our edit. Maybe we clean up this outro here. I'm gonna I'm going to uh, split this and delete it. So let's just say, okay, there, there it is. We want to grab these timestamps for later. Well, if you go up to view and then go to window and then go to edit details and now there's like um it's control alt 4 it's this one so you could use that in the future but this is the the path to get to it you hit that and it will actually bring up a bunch of different things you may have in here regions selected events so we specifically want the markers and then all you have to do is click in the corner and it will copy or you can select it all that way and then you can control C and it will save it. Then you can open up something like Notepad. I personally like using Sublime, but Notepad's fine, it's free. And there you go, you've got your timestamps and you can use any kind of editor to get rid of these last ones and these first ones. 
because you really want your timestamp to be a little bit more like this. Uh, so I recommend using a multi cursor supported editor. I don't know if Notepad can do it, but I use Sublime for that, or you could use um, Visual Code for it. That is all, that one's free and also totally works. And yeah, so that's how I like to do my timestamp so you can get them real easy, bring them in. And let's say, okay, we've got our edit, we're here. You could drag in more footage, edit the footage. Um, one issue with this though, is I am still big in the center. And I, you know, don't do that in my video, I'm in the corner. And if I were to try and move myself around with this, it's just a huge pain using the little, oh, crop pan area. So instead, I'm going to use the track motion. If this control isn't here for you, you can click here and go to edit visible button set and make sure track motion is on there. This is incredible because it lets you pan everything that is on the track. So even though I have all these clips that have been done, they have different, um, this is a per clip setting. So this is, I'd have to pan each one of these each clip. Like it really isn't a good way to do it. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this track motion it grabs the whole thing. I'm gonna just shrink myself down into a corner. Now there's an aspect lock, and there's also, I've locked it on the Y axis, so I can't move it up or down. You could turn these off, but it's just more handy that way. So I'm just gonna put myself down here, grab it. I'm just clicking, no extra modifier keys or nothing, if you have these two on the lock version. And there you go, I'm down there in the corner. If we look, it's the same for all clips, which is amazing. Um, you'd be shocked. Uh, how global track effects like this can be a lot more complicated in other editors where here it's just bing bing boop done um, And yeah, now we're good. We've got myself in the corner got the green screen going everything is good to go and All we need to do now is export it. So let's come up here to file go to render as Give it a sec to pull up the render and now if you're looking to go to YouTube I highly recommend the magic's AVC, AAC, MP4, this, um, you know, it's just a good setting. Now I have a custom one that I have set up, but the, like you just pick your resolution and your frame rate. So you might go with this one and just go for that. I have one called custom. If you're interested in what the settings are, these are them. They're not highly complicated. It's mostly just changing it to a variable bit rate from 40,000 to 100,000. And you can look at the bit rate you're enco encoding at if you are interested in optimizing things like file sizes. But honestly, I started out with just, uh, which one was it? It was just a 1080p FPS one. And if you have an NVIDIA um, graphics card, you can use special rendering that will go quite a bit faster. And then yeah, and here you can just click edit. And I just bumped this up to 100,000, which can help help with the video quality. I'll also go into audio often and just bump this up to 320, but you could look at your recording settings, however you're recording and match those. There's no point in going higher. If you didn't record at that rate, then it doesn't matter if you bump this up or not. So yeah, anyways, that's what I go for that. And then you just hit render. It'll give you an estimated file size and away you go. So you hit render, it's going to start and give it a second. It's thinking it doesn't like the fact that I've got OBS going at the same time. And you've got a bunch of different options in here to see exactly what's happening. It's actually, this could be really nice if you run into issues, but I've noticed with this latest build of Vegas that it is just incredibly stable, like the most stable experience I've ever had with Vegas. So it's been a joy to work with and have confidence that nothing's gonna go wrong or, or turn off on me. It just works. Uh, so that's really great to have in, you know, a pro tool. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos. And have a blessed day.